This is Jamie Romero with Learn by the Bible. Welcome to Introduction to Java Programming. Hi, this is Jamie Romero with Learn by the Byte, and we're going to do our course introduction. Now, what I was thinking of doing here as we start our course out is to bring up the, the Udemy screen and give you a feel for what you're going to be seeing in this course. Right now, we're doing the course overview video. Uh, the next couple things that you'll be able to see, there's a, an option to download the files that are associated with this course. And also, uh, another thing in section one we'll see, uh, or you'll see later on, is that there's a video on setting up your computer so that you can configure your system to match what I have. One of the things that we'll have you do over and over in this class is run the same examples I'm running. We're going to have you doing the exercises. And so having your machine set up is going to be critical. After that, we have um, section two, getting started with Java. In that section, we're going to be doing just a simple first Java program. We're just going to get you going with Java, uh, showing you some of the, the basics of what a program looks like. We'll show you how to compile the program, how to run the program. In section two, everything is going to be done on the command line. In other words, we're going to bring up a, a command prompt window and run our compiling and our running of Java commands in there. Uh, from there, chapter three, we'll, we'll slide over and we'll start talking about Eclipse. And so for some reason, you weren't able to do all of your setup. Maybe you weren't able to get the, the path variables configured like we asked you to. That's only going to affect you for chapter two. Once you move over to three, Eclipse, we're going to introduce what Eclipse is. And then from that point forward in the course, we'll use Eclipse to do all of our programming. Section four, data types and variables. We'll introduce the eight primitive data types. We'll talk a lot about strings and what strings are and how to use them. We'll also introduce the concept of arrays. From there, section five is called operators and expressions. Here we're going to be looking at simple operators like plus and minus, multiply, divide. And we'll also go more complex as well. We'll look at things like ands and ors. Those are our logical operators. We'll get into plus, plus, and minus, minus, increment and decrement, and so on. Chapter six is called control flow. Here's where we're going to be looking at the syntax in Java for doing things like if statements or uh, loops as well. Chapter seven, methods. Those first uh, six chapters, things will be pretty simple. We're not going to be going really deep into uh, large programs. But once we cover methods, we can do a lot more. And so we'll break up our code into several different methods and have all of them called by what we're going to uh, call the, the main method. Chapter eight, object-oriented programming. If you're not an OO person, if you're new to object-oriented, this will be a, a nice chapter, a nice set of lectures that give you a good overview of what object-oriented is all about. We'll talk about the main ideas of encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism in, in section eight. Number nine, now that we know about OO, we're gonna build some objects and classes. So we're gonna be introducing the new keyword to create objects. We'll be describing differences between instance data and class data, creating more methods, and really spending a lot of time on, on creating what are called constructors. These are special kinds of methods that we use to initialize our objects. You'll notice that at the end of every one of these chapters, we have exercises, labs. So things for you to do on your own. And then after the labs are done, I'll have some reviews to show you how maybe I would have done them. So uh, we'll say this over and over in this course, uh, we don't want this to be a, a passive learning experience. No, if you really want to learn Java, you need to go out and, and really do this stuff on your keyboards, on your systems. And so these exercises are going to be very, very helpful. Uh, section 10, using Java objects. We'll see that any object you create, you may want to add in what's called a two-string method. Or if you want to compare them against each other, add an equals method. We'll talk about things like uh, the garbage collector with destroying objects. We'll talk about string builders and string buffers and how they're different from strings. So good, good section there, section 10. Number 11, inheritance in Java. Here we're looking at, in, uh, we're looking at how you could have one class as a base class and have other classes build from there. So you can take something that's already existing and add more to it. So we'll describe inheritance, and that's something we will have already seen in the OO chapter, but now we'll see it in Java. And we'll add in extra stuff like the super keyword, or we'll talk about the at override annotation. Chapter 12, we go deeper into inheritance. We cover things like abstract classes and interfaces. 
We also talk about generics. Uh, generics are a, a newer feature in Java that allow us to have collections where we can specify the data type of what those are storing. A collection is kind of like kind of like an array. It stores lots of lots of stuff inside of it. Chapter 13 packages. We'll be grouping together similar code in a package, and we'll see how we can make use of things like the import statement to use things use packages uh, maybe from the Java libraries or use classes from from other locations. Chapter 14 exception handling. Here we're doing what are called try catch blocks. So if something goes wrong, you can catch that exception and deal with it. We'll also see how you can throw exceptions here in number 14. Uh, the 15th set of videos. There's a lot of videos here. We've got over 200. Uh, I.O. streams. Here we're talking about reading and writing, uh, reading and writing files specifically. So we're going to be working with binary files as well as text files. And then the final section we have is on collections, collection classes. We're going to describe things like the array list and the link list class. We'll talk about sets and maps, things like hash maps as well. So these last two sections, 15 and 16, they make their way into the Java libraries, whereas the first big part of this course was all about the Java language. So that's, that's it. Uh, over 200 lectures here, over 20 hours worth of content. Um, we teach Java programming day to day in our sister company, Batki Howell. And we've, we've done these classes for years and years. And so what's now available to you via these videos is the same content that people take in live sessions, but now you can do it on your own time frame. You can do it at a, at a lower price point, too. So let's look at chapter one here, course introduction. Course objectives. By the end of the course, you should be able to, well, you should be able to write standalone applications using Java. Absolutely. You can be writing programs. You'll be able to accurately implement OO concepts using Java features like classes, interfaces, references. These are the fundamental uh, features that, that, that OO is built upon. In Java, we're going to be writing code to implement those. And so this is going to be our first, oh, I'd say first seven or eight chapters. We're going to be just focusing on the Java syntax. And then from there, chapter eight and on, we're going to be moving over to the OO concepts. Uh, we had that chapter. This was chapter 13 on packages. So we'll be creating well scope classes using packages. You'll be dealing with exceptions. So you'll be able to write programs which both handle and create exceptions. That was section 14. By the end of the course, you should be able to read and write data using I.O. streams. That was section 15. So we're going to be reading and writing both text and binary files. And finally, by the end of the course, you'll be able to use the Java Collections framework to work with groups of objects. Those are things like array lists, hash maps, link list, hash set, etc. We'll see how to make use of the Java libraries to go beyond just basic Java language arrays. And so lots of stuff here, lots of content, a couple hundred videos, over 20 hours of content, uh, much, uh, very much stuff, a lot of stuff to look at is what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, course overview, who's this course for? Well, the original design of this course is for people who want to move into Java, but maybe don't have any experience in a C, C++, or C Sharp uh, background. If you do know C++ or C Sharp, you'll probably be able to go a little quicker through sections 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So if you're a C++ or C Sharp programmer, sections 4 through 8 you can go a little quicker through. If you're a C programmer, well, you'll probably still want to know about section 8 on OO, but you probably can go a little quicker through 4, 5, and 6 which would be more of the basic syntax parts of the course. Everybody uh, should have an environment that you set up, given the setup instructions that are in one of our lectures. And uh, we do assume that you are a programmer of some sort, but not a Java programmer necessarily. And finally, the uh, last page here, we have a set of suggested references. These are just additional materials that you might want to look at after the course or during the course to help you out and give you another perspective on the content you're learning. So a bunch of good books that are out there, as well as some nice URLs as well. So that does it for our course overview. Uh, please go out and download the student files uh, associated with this course, and then make your way over to the computer setup video.